Well, greetings and welcome back, Blade fans. Thanks for joining me once again to enjoy yet another new fixed blade knife that came my way. And right up front, I'm going to thank my good buddy and uh, fellow content creator and blogger, uh, podcaster on uh, YouTube, uh, Bob DeMarco, the knife junkie. This knife is a design, you might say creation of his, that uh, is made by Hogtooth Knives. Hogtooth Knives is Matt Chase, who is a journeyman bladesmith with the American Bladesmith Society. And uh, this is a custom-made blade that Bob designed and uh, got multiple copies made of. This he's referring to as the Nova 1, and there is a Nova 2 on the drawing boards, I am told. This is from 154 CM Steel. It is a solid and robust EDC knife used for whatever you, you whatever need comes along. It is a recurve, as you can see, a gentle recurve with a hollow grind. All of these specs were requested by Bob DeMarco, the knife junkie. And um, also right up front, I'm going to say that Bob has gifted me this knife, and I am just so flattered that he sent this my way. Yes, it was uh, in a line with a birthday I had <laughs> recently in the month of December 2023. So uh, we're in the early part of December now. It's past the old birth date, and I'm uh, feeling a little older, but uh, inspired that I have friends in the knife community such as Bob DeMarco. So shout out to Bob and the Knife Junkie channel. If you haven't yet checked it out, it should be a regular place to visit for you every week. He puts out multiple videos he does Thursday Night Knives, where you can join in live and uh, let him know what you're carrying and see some special guests. He has an interview every Sunday, usually with a knife maker or knife collector, someone prominent in the knife community. And I must say that I've been on there twice. <laughs> okay, well, two and a half minutes in, and I haven't talked much about the knife yet, although I'm holding it in the hand for those to get nervous when we don't do the reveal. So here we have an incredible stone wash. I love these kinds of finishes because they don't show wear very easily. Uh, this knife is sharp as the Dickens, and uh, I'm not sure I got any paper nearby, but before we're done, I'm going to do a slicing test of the paper, just in case paper accosts you in a dark alley, you know. Uh, ha ha. <laughs> we have a very nice burgundy linen. I'm going to call it a linen micarta, I believe. It's not rough enough to be uh, canvas or burlap, certainly. It's got a nice grain to it. It's got that nice polish, but with these uh, this deep texture here, kind of a, a rock pattern. That's what I call it. A nice finger groove that you are locked in with and some extremely effective file like jimping which i love and this means i can hold this knife in one of my favorite positions which is the filipino grip i know everybody's wondering what the heck a filipino grip is if you haven't studied uh, filipino martial arts but uh, bob and i both have and we appreciate the fact that you can hold it with your thumb on the back to reinforce the cuts you can remove the thumb and do any one of a number of different uh, tactical movements. However, this is not simply a tactical knife. This is a very usable EDC with a blade that's about three and a half inches, I believe, and an overall length. Well, let's just measure it, okay? And if you haven't been out to see Hogtooth Knives yet, uh, check out... Uh, that website, it's really, really interesting. Uh, also, forged blades are out there. So we've got about a uh, 7.35, uh, I'm going to say, to the handle. 
we've actually got uh, like a 3.65 and sharpened edge three and a quarter we're going to call that with a very nice uh, sharpening choil i mean everything that bob has learned and appreciates about fixed blade knives and knives in general seems to have been incorporated into this we've got inches so blade stock 0.16 hefty Handle thickness, 0 0.60, also a nice thickness and contour to hang on to. Uh, 4.2 millimeter blade stock. Very nice. How about the weight before I forget? What the knife is without the sheath, and I, as I believe I showed you, it comes in a very nice Kydex sheath. We'll take a look at it in a moment. Scale zeroed out. So we've got only 3.91, call it 3.92 ounces. Well under four ounces for a fixed blade is pretty incredible. And right in there with uh, other small blades. Now, um, I did mention it's 154 CM, not CPM 154, 154 uh, CM blade steel. It's got these uh, two nice screws in here, which end up being uh, T20. Looking at my uh, nice bit there from Wea. By the way, you know, Wea gets talked up a lot. Um, there's the case it came in. Uh, and I was sort of saying, oh, you know, they're relatively inexpensive, this, that, and the other thing. And they are relatively inexpensive, but they are uh, highly sought after. I don't know if it's sought after is the term, but highly regarded by those especially who are disassembling uh, knives. Uh, they fit perfectly. I get slop with just about every other bit set, but we have bits just fit in there and they're not going to strip your uh, screws if you're, if you're careful, of course. Anyway, um, looking at more details here, we have a clip point, recurve, going to call it a bowie or buoy. Nice swedge at the top. Hollow grind, as I said, a fairly high hollow grind. So many things besides that sharpening choil and a very nice plunge grind uh, have been incorporated into this knife. Obviously, uh, the maker, did I say Tom? <laughs> Got to check my phone, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, Matt, I'm so sorry, Matt. Matt Chase, journeyman bladesmith. And you don't get too many knives made today by guys that are uh, truly bladesmiths. Um, a lot are being turned out by uh, places that do CNC work that basically are a small factory where the blades are all clones of each other. These are handmade. And uh, by the way, this is number 24 of 27. So Bob had 27 of these made. Um, I'm not sure if this came out of the first run or the second run. He can chime in. And there you see the hog tooth knife logo. Very nicely done with like a, can't really see it, I don't think, because of the black and blade, but the G in the hog tooth comes down like a tooth, which is kind of cool. And uh, I think that's nice when you kind of make a, a graphic out of your uh, your name, and it's uh, simply the, the the name of your uh, your business. Right here, you can see, and it's a little hard to see because it's etched in white. I think it's probably obviously done with a laser, not by uh, an etching tool, uh, or maybe it is, but I think it's lasered. Um, hog tooth. I mean, sorry, uh, the knife junkie. Okay. So the Knife Junkie emblem is on there. Bob has been uh, taking orders for these on his channel. I think he's getting into the second variation of this. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to be asking for them. This was a gift. I don't ask how much gifts cost. I have uh, bequeathed many blades to Bob's channel over the years for giveaway and uh, ones that Bob has adopted uh, for himself. We have a full tang knife, rounded pommel, beautifully radiused, uh, contoured uh, profile there to the handle. It just feels, it melts right into the hand. It is not a large knife, right? 
but it holds extremely well in the Pakal grip, which is one that I really like and appreciate, particularly for defensive work. Um, just for a small knife, fits in the hand beautifully. Taking a look at the sheath, um, this is a nicely molded kydex sheath out of substantially thick kydex with what I love on knives, and I'm glad Bob had uh, requested this if it wasn't already in part of the, the package, that lip that we have here that allows you to put your finger in the finger groove and so easily snap that off. But the question is, is it retained in there? Absolutely. Minimum amount of tiny little bit of not even what I call rattle. We can't call it rattle. It's not move. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Thought I heard something. We got a discrete carry concepts. Discrete concepts carry? No, discrete carry concepts, DCC clip. It's mounted on um, these two holes, so you've got the option of moving it up about uh, maybe inch, inch and a half. And then you've got these two grommets at the bottom. Should you want to like neck carry this, you probably could, it isn't that heavy. Um, fits in there beautifully though. So this would snap into a pocket and this is a real cloth grabber, by the way, these DCC clips, it, they're gonna hang on for dear life. You've got to lift it to get it out of your pocket or your pants. This would be a great appendix carry. Um, you could add loops on if that's the way you want it to go. I happen to be uh, really favoring these. Of course, the Ulti clips are good too. They they certainly do a, a death grip on the uh, on the clothing. Let's do a compare. And most of the compares today are going to be custom knives. Uh, this one is not a custom knife. It's a Spider Co. It is a Spider Co. that is made, I think, in Taiwan. No, Japan. Japan, sorry. So made in Japan. Um, and uh, it, for compare, because it's kind of my standard for compare for size, is right in there, same, same length overall, just about. Uh, same blade, no, the hog tooth is a little longer. I should say the Nova. By the way, Nova, as Bob states it, is for Northern Virginia. And he's uh, doing a little bit of thumb in his nose at the very restrictive laws they had in Virginia, where he lives. But um, recently, they have uh, changed the law and allowed automatics to be carried. So they're definitely progressing. Here's another kind of, uh, it's a factory-made knife by uh, Fox. I think it's made by Fox for Bastinelli. It's a Bastion Cove's design, and uh, it's right in there too. Maybe just a tad longer. Yeah, Ooh, it's just a tad longer. One of my favorite knives as far as comfort goes. Look how thin that handle is. Uh, my Carta handle, great thumb ramp there. Same thing I appreciate as uh, with the uh, Nova here. And uh, we're going to keep on going here. Here is another favorite custom maker, t -Kale Knives. That's the Guardian. He makes a variant of this with a ring as well. And uh, one more, just one more. No, two more. Let's go with another favorite custom maker, AB Knives or Aaron Bieber. This is one I picked up because of Bob. I'm going to get some of the other ones out of the way here. This is his model 302, and it is also a small pocketable knife. When I say pocketable, these can be dropped in the uh, pocket as long as they got a thumb off sheath, and you can simply uh, give it a push, and uh, it should pop right off. Hard to see that black on black there, but they're pretty much the same length. Blades may be ever so slightly shorter. Beautiful Sukumaki wrap on this by Aaron. Then uh, I think I do have one more now, and it is a custom Dirk Pinkerton. This is a whole different animal. If I can get it out of the sheath, I'm glad it's in there nicely because it's got two nasty edges. 
This is the Smilodon, sorry, Smilodon. I'm supposed to say Smilodon, not Smilodon. Um, shorter even. And this is a specialty Pical knife meant to be held this away. And I think the steel on this one, yeah, CTS XHP, a very nice high hardness stainless. And this is designed to be used this way or this way, or provided you remember not to put your thumb out there, can be used this way. So very versatile small knife. But let's get back to it here. The hog tooth, Nova One, designed by the knife junkie himself, Bob DeMarco. And I did say we'd do some paper cutting. I almost forgot. Here we go. Are we ready? Oh, razor blade. Oh man, Matt has put a beautiful edge on this. Look at that. <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes knives require a little stropping. This one's just a razor blade out of the box. That beautiful Nova One. Well, as I was going to say earlier, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. I will be back with you real soon. i got more new stuff coming in. Thank you again, Bob DeMarco, for this incredible birthday gift. Much appreciated. And uh, looking forward to many more years of friendship with you. Thank you.